my dears, let's start with two words of explanation about what happened uh, yesterday during the concert. And uh, as you know, it was referring to the uh, Tbilisi culture of Ashiks, but I would say it was, uh, uh, it was just a starting point, because yes, we did have uh, uh, Ashik uh, Nargila, who's the representat representative of the uh, Azerbaijani community in Tbilisi. She's actually my neighbor uh, in the old town. And, uh, and it was the representation of broadly and simply speaking, uh, exceptional multiculturality of this place, of the city that I live and I feel very much the part of. Uh, and uh, today Vigan was talking about the uh, multicultural aspect of Tbilisi in the context of uh, the city that gave birth to many artists that were not considered themselves, they were not uh, identifying them themselves according to their uh, national uh, heritage, so to speak. Uh, to but to something else, and it's broader heritage, this um, compilation, conglomerate, we would even say, of uh, uh, poetic, musical, aesthetic, uh, philosophical um, uh, influences. And uh, some of that you could hear yesterday during the concert. Now, about the Ashiks, because uh, maybe some of you know but the word itself uh, derives from Persian and uh, derives from a noun, which is ash or esh. It depends on the, the uh, version of Persian language. Could, mm. But it means uh, lover. It means a person who is in love. And uh, yes, this is the same. This, that's, that's exactly the same root. And, uh, and in this meaning, the, the poet's bards, the culture of Ashiks that we are referring to, to actually start the, 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 the tale about uh, Tbilisi as a, uh, as a kind of a brain of all that, yes? The, the meeting point, the borderland, the city as a borderland uh, that combined, embraced, and transformed all the uh, influences that we were talking about. Uh, then Ashiks were the transmitters of these influences into ma in many respects. And uh, coming from, and well, I would say they have really ancient roots because they are mentioned uh, in, uh, uh, they first mentioned as Georgian Ashiks comes from the wedding of Queen Tamar in the uh, 11th century. And uh, then onwards, it's a, vi uh, uh, a vital part of culture. And uh, then we come to Tbilisi, uh, the 19th century Tbilisi, uh, things that you could hear yesterday at the concerts very much reflect uh, the heritage of this multicultural 19th century city. And uh, I will stop here and uh, give microphone to Rafael, of uh, whom you know that apart from being a, uh, a virtuoso of guitar, uh, he's an ethnomusical musicologist, ethnomusicologist, and his uh, erudition in this regard is uh, incomparable. So, here you go. <coughs> uh, yes. So, um, yeah, a little bit story, you know, like a personal story with Ashik's, uh, my pers personal story. Because I was uh, I was born as a borderlander, you know, and uh, everything w what was happening, you know, after and uh, and uh, yeah, my my first connection with music was uh, even you know by accident uh, connected to Ashik culture. Because when I dreamt about my first guitar, you know, my grandmother she brought me. A kemencha as a replaced of a, of a guitar because we we bankrupt in the beginning of nineties you know and uh, we didn't have the money for uh, for buy proper guitar you know so she said that she have something similar and it, it's you know for me it was like a little banjo you know something 
But you know, I start play uh, music on on this uh, instrument without bow. You know, so it was I trade this like a guitar. You know, and uh, and uh, after I had the guitar, you know, and uh, when I was like seventeen, uh, maybe my family start working with refugees like a couple of year, years uh, uh, before and they asked me you know because it was in Poland in the 90s it was completely messed with these organizations you know and uh, everything was quite wide you know and uh, <laughs> and they they asked me you know as a 17 years old young guy you know to uh, to organize some band with uh, refugees and they uh, I met them, you know, the, they, they were, at this time, they, they were mostly from uh, Kosovo, Karabakh, it's mean, mostly they were mixed marriages, you know, like uh, Azeri um, and Armenians, and uh, so, so I, yeah, so I tried to organize something, you know, and I was completely, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I know something, you know, I, I because it wasn't like a YouTube at this time, so so I had uh, some imagination much more about this music. But uh, they start to teach me, you know, how to play this, and, and uh, I had this electric guitar, you know, and we start to playing with this uh, mixed marriages. The band was like this: the Azeri Armenians played together after Kosovians. I had the one Russian from Baku for a synthesizer. He was completely also borderland, you know, uh, borderlander. He he play in this kind of arabesque uh, uh, Eastern uh, synthesizer. He he told me that he don't know who is he. You know, he he was typical like a heavy drunker from Siberia. You know, and he 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 was in this back, you know, some some time, and he. He he wanted to find some money, you know, so he learned how to play this Azeri uh, kind of music, and uh, we had one amazing guy on drums. He was a guy from Africa who who was lost in Russia, and he, they took him to jail because he was uh, someone, you know, took him to some village, and they saw the village people. They saw him and they said that he's uh, like a devil, you know, something. So, so police they, they took him to to jail, you know, and he he was extremely uh, good uh, with uh, languages. So he spoke like a proper Russian, you know. And he we this band, you know, we play, you know, and uh, Armenian. We had the Armenian dancer also. So this the story is like a symbolic also with this book, you know, because after when we when we play, they. We, 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 we with our family, we had a friend uh, from Armenia. Uh, he was a um, victim of earthquake. He had uh, nine, 19 surgeries. He took a lot of morphine. And we, we, we because our half uh, kind of mansion, you know, it was like, uh, it was empty. So he lives uh, in uh, some big uh, room. And he took uh, this morphine and he started singing, you know. And we, with my brother, we liked to listen to this because it was like, uh, you know, kind of our meeting with something exotic because his, he, his melodies was, you know, they were amazing, you know, very exotic, you know. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was our first meeting with this uh, kind of culture. And, uh, but, but yeah, but he was, uh, he gives me this, uh, this uh, book, you know, as a, uh, you know, a gift for me, you know, because I, he told me that that I'm, I'm ready to play, Ashik music, you know, and from this, you know, I, I asked him, you know, who is on the cover, you know, this this guy, and he told me that he's a Sayat Nova, you know, so, from uh, early age, you know, I, I growing with the Sayat Nova meat, you know, after I saw, pomegranate color of color of pomegranates, yes, and. Uh, after internet came, you know, so, so my, mm, this is what I want to play first, you know, little, you know, uh, little uh, moment, you know, of this music is, uh, this what I, uh, the, the song that I learned first, you know, with refugees, it's song from Armenia, written by Sayat Nova, uh, 18th century composer from Armenia. Yeah. 
This is Kemencha, you know, proper Kemencha, not like I play. <laughs> So kamencha and bow instruments they are very connected to to our to to, to ashik uh, ashik culture so yesterday i wanted to uh, give you a little bit example you know of this uh, and i play bow on electric guitar sometimes you can find this kamencha sound from this because we we doesn't have you know this uh, um, bow player you know but So, you know, a lot of questions, you know, came to me, you know, and uh, about this uh, culture and uh, to be part of this culture, you know, because uh, this is what I recognize that, that I have, uh, I had uh, big connections with these refugees because I was born as a refugee in a mixed family, like a mi from minorities from Poland, I told you at first uh, dilemma. And uh, I was a young person, you know, and I asked myself why I'm so connected to these people, you know, and so, so for me, this is what we talk, because I have the rehearsals, you know, I, I know that here is a, a lot of talks, you know, very serious talks about uh, this, what is borderland, and I like this at the beginning, you know, we ask what is the borderland, you know, so 70% of people here, you know, they, they uh, think about borderland as uh, something uh, dangerous, for example. Yes? For me, borderland is a homeland, you know. So uh, uh, these people who are on the borders, you know, who are, who are refugees also, and uh, refugees like I, you know, who come back, you know, to country. Because I was born as a refugee, but, but I came to country, which is my hometown, kind of, you know. But I also not connected to this country because I am much more from minorities from Poland. So uh, uh, for me, borderland is, uh, first of all, is, it's a meeting, you know, and, and meeting is uh, our, for me, it's a bless for us, you know, the, the biggest bless for us is a, is a meeting, you know, between us. And, uh, and I feel, you know, a lot of, uh, amazing uh, uh, feelings you know to to this that we meeting you know like uh, like here and this what you heard yesterday this was first uh, just you know little try of this what we we made like a soundtrack for dilemma yes like uh, like we we think about borderland also here and everywhere because borderland is also everywhere and it's it's connected not only on a board uh, with borders you know but also with the with people you know what i will explain a little bit uh, later so i i asked also about uh, myself about story of uh, ashuk you know and this who we are in eastern europe which is bigger uh, for me than uh, on the map you know what we what we have on the geographical maps and uh, uh, we have we have a lot of influences that we forgot, you know, or, or you know, people wanted that, that we will forgot about them. Now, so for me, first, uh, what I uh, when I digging with the Ashik culture is this that I find some kind of beginning uh, in Punjab, you know, and uh, and this culture, you know, of this Silk Road, especially. Uh, people from Punjab, you know, as a people also connected to Zarathustrian uh, and uh, before. So I want to play a little bit, you know, Ashoks from Punjab. And you, you can see, you know, that after maybe we will have a time, you can see that a lot of things are very connected, you know, and very similar from Punjab to Belarus even. So this is Punjab music. 
Also, Ashiks, they were from the beginning connected to some spiritual um, beliefs and they they were connected to kind of Sufi, you know, I like this word, but it's uh, it means that it, they were connected to uh, Islam, you know, but it was before Islam, it's, it was even maybe before um, Zaratustrian uh, beliefs, yes, so... Yeah. Some believe that one of these roots, uh, some researchers believe that one of these roots reaches to Central Asian uh, shamanic cultures, and there were uh, poets, mm, poets, shamans, singers, uh, calling themselves Ozan, and uh, at some point uh, uh, they started to take the title of Ashik because it became as an institu it became sort of an institution it became um, you would say like a, uh, a calling even yes that, uh, that the person would decide that he is able he she is able because there are also women Ashoks um, that they are able to um, perform the duty of this connector for the communities that they were serving. And when I was talking to Nargile, uh, this is very much how she perceives her profession today. She says, uh, I, I am for the community. I need to serve the community. I need to serve the people. And uh, it is done because you need to lead people in rituals. You need to lead them through rituals. And that is the main uh, call of Ashik. That is their main function. So whether it is a wedding, whether it is a funeral, whether it is a, uh, uh, a uh, commun communal meeting, a festival, let's say, fest of any sort, they are there to remind people of something that is fundamental and which derives from the very root, the very shamanic root, and this um, dastans, the traditional um, epic poems that were mostly uh, uh, they, they were mostly developed in Turkish language uh, domain. They could be recited even for four days. They 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 were going into the community and staying with the community and telling them these stories, uh, standing with sas, standing with, you know, singing, reciting. And this was taking several days, four or five days. So um, in nowadays times, I'm jumping a little bit, but we will be jumping a lot, I think, <laughs> between cultures at times. Uh, and uh, these days, uh, it didn't really change that much because they are called whenever something important for people happens because they still serve as a uh, um, guide through some kind of spiritual process. Yes, so so um, some some uh, minorities, especially and people who um, traveling, you know, they they keep some uh, stronger, you know, tra uh, connections with the, with this what was uh, at the beginning, and especially I'm uh, I have a very big inspiration from uh, Baluchi people, and they uh, they live uh, on the borders of Pakistan, Afghanistan, little bit India. He, this guy is connected to this, but uh, uh, what what is amazing with them, you know, they generally they are uh, they believe on something what is called zikri, and they uh, they believe uh, for uh, this main figure is a nur pak, and they said that is a pure light, you know, so it's very connected to to this what uh, what is the root of the Sufi movement, and. Uh, Mm, so two examples, amazing, you know, is this that uh, because uh, 
Greeks, you know, they came to Afghanistan by uh, this uh, amazing film uh, about this documentary movie about uh, traveling from Greece to Afghanistan by boats. And not so much people believe that it, it happened, you know, but this uh, guy, he found uh, some uh, old uh, uh, rivers, you know, and he, he said that it was possible. And uh, there in, with, in Baluchi culture, you can find amazing double flute, which, which is, co uh, they play uh, also this Sufi music, but uh, just instrumental, uh, but on on flute that you that they use it this in uh, uh, anti Greek you know so this is Baluchi people they 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 are of course you know they have a lot of problems you know because they are completely you know free they they have a connection a little bit with the Rajasthan people so gypsies and uh, Orthodox Islam they you know they they said that they are sect you know so until now even they they are killed you know by uh, like a secret religious police you know and these things uh, and uh, but now they they became quite uh, you know uh, known in their culture you know one guy he's uh, amazing i met him once ustad nur baksh i show you something amazing you know because he play on an instrument who is called banjo. Banjo is a, something like a thumb piano, and you play peak, you know. But here you have a, a keyboard, you know. And this instrument came to Pakistan by, from Japan um, because one sailor who felt love to some Pakistani woman, he took this, uh, uh, this instrument to uh, to Pakistan because he he felt you know, love and he wanted to play some sad songs, you know, and Baluchi people, they heard this instrument, so so one of the top instruments in Baluchi culture it came from Japan, you know, so this is uh, amazing, it's sometimes it's just one sailor who changed, you know, so a lot, yes, so, so this is also my, you know, admiration of uh, Borderland, yes, so this is this instrument. Yeah, this is instrument. He's quite famous. He's he traveling around Europe. It's always cold for him, you know. I remember we, we played together during the summer and he had a jacket, you know, like a ski jacket. You know? <laughs> amazing, you know, amazing construction. They have amazing mythology, you know, and uh, yeah, it's very, very connected to this, what you find in Ashik culture. Yes, this is amazing. Yes, general. Yes, yes, general. You, you, you heard. You know, I said zikr. You know, they, they yeah. believe on this. You know, zikr is the root of this. So zikr is a this what uh, what keep uh, Baluchi people together. You know, this uh, nurpak as a pure light. Yes, after zikr became dance. You know, so this is uh, also I want to play this. So you have a. Um, especially Kurdish people, they mm -hmm. keep some very old uh, rhythms from, uh, from uh, ancient uh, music. And they have, uh, even now, they have uh, in a very pure uh, Islam music, they have a typical um, Ashik, you know, kind of Sufi um, titles, you know. For example, this is the string of sweetheart's hair. Sometimes they said about, you know, 
love yes but but uh, it's uh, about some different you know things i think we have a little bit limits of words and maybe they use in a, a lot of cultures you have uh, something like this that they they for example they write uh, like a poem about like a romance yes but uh, they talk about something more yes it's so uh, so words are much more symbolic than than uh, yes than simple yes so this is example of zikr zikr is uh, amazing uh, tradition and you know especially you know zikr is amazing in chechenia mm -hmm. chechens they have a very wide you know typical uh, zikr and story of this is of course you know turkish people and uh, a lot of people you know it's a, this one is a this is kurdish people from uh, uh, from iran uh, but uh, uh, yes one what i wanted to what Kurdish from Iran. Iran, yes. May yeah. I add a point? Yes, uh, with this, uh, w w you find an examples of zikr in uh, in Muslim communities in Georgia, particularly with the Kisti people, which are close relatives of Chechens. Kisti, Kisti, Kist, Kist. Uh, yes, the um, the uh, amazing. Amazing thing about thing about it is that uh, uh, up uh, up till not long ago, women were also uh, dancing zikr and totally uh, not. I mean, it's an evenement. It's not seen anywhere else in the world. How do you pronounce zikr? Zikr. What kind of dancing? Festival. Some dance. Yes, it's a collective dance. Yes, a lot of people dancing, and uh, and this is the the root of this. You know what I, uh, you know, the question from, for, uh, you know, our, our uh, connection, you know, general as Eastern Europe, you know, because I always said about Eastern Europe, not mid Middle Europe, you know, because I I, f it's much more symbolic about spirituality, yes, because we have a much more influences from this then from French culture, for example. And uh, from this season, you know, I have a theory that we generally, we're living in a post-French uh, Russian romanticism, you know, because, for example, when we're growing, you know, we talk about love, for example, and love in this culture, you know, in Poland, for sure, it's, it's good to suffering from love, you know, so, so when we start a life like this, you know, we are, we at the beginning, we are broken, you know, and Sufi, they said something completely different, you know, love is something completely different than this, you know, and f for me, our connection with uh, Sufi is uh, stronger than we think, but church, you know, imperialist, a lot of things uh, cut our relation with, with these kind of ideas, yes, and uh, the, Proofs are, you know, a lot, you know, because, for example, Hasidic movement is uh, who they, they, Baal Shem Tov, he was born in the Carpathian mountains in Ukraine, and uh, they were very influenced by Sufi people, you know, they had a relation with this, but they didn't know even what they, what they do too much, you know, and it was a pure, you know, mystical movement until moment that they, uh, they go uh, down from the mountains because they met Austro-Hungarian imperialists who organized religion, you know, and uh, uh, so, so our, you know, in my opinion, you know, our mysticism and uh, spiritual is much more connected to this ancient world and, uh, you know, it, it will be also in a dilemma in Armenia, you know, we, I will say, I will talk about our connection with uh, Black Sea General, so our brain of uh, our culture you know but uh, uh, yeah some some of uh, this idea they are here yeah so it's about Sufi yeah, they they the same Hasidic people you know they dance for chance for to be you know in, in close to God you know or you know in general you know it was even you know I read about uh, Hasidic you know people who 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 even construct some special you know things uh, 
with pants, you know, to have an orgasm, you know, uh, during dance, you know. Oh. So it was uh, a lot of, you know, things I in a Kabbalistic religion, Kabbalah, Kabbalah, you know, now it's uh, like, you know, something, you know, completely uh, pervert, you know, but before it was quite okay, you know, to have an <laughs> orgasm also if you, <laughs> in a, in a, when you pray, you know, when you pray. So from this is on this move, you know, yeah. like Jewish people had, you know, this was also for trans, but they also <laughs> did different uh, moves, you know. Yeah, this is a transturbation. Yes, yes, this is meditation. Can I ask something? There is a practical connection. A practical way to my... A super practical guy in this one. Like, say... Especially... No, there was a reason behind that. They were reaching the orgasm during the rituals because in... Caucasian mountain parts, like women were not allowed to be a part of the ritual, so there was only male presence, so there was only way to. I'm sure that wasn't the only yeah, yeah. way. Come okay. on. Um, <laughs> one, one, just yeah, yeah, one. No, I already have time. It was only men yes. allowed to have orgasm together or what? So let's let's retreat let's retreat to poetry at this point. Shall we? And uh, yes, and that is uh, that is actually uh, very coincidental that I have chosen this uh, this uh, uh, or maybe it is not coincidental. Uh, Exactly, it's a 12th century uh, sex poem by Rumi, and it is called bread making. If anyone knows it, it's a, mm. and this is very much in the Sufi tradition, uh, where you know love to the divine is uh, uh, manifested in a very physical form of it. Uh, where I will tell say two words about the symbolic because we were talking about how things that are written, you know, they are, they are, um, there are meanings behind the meanings and sometimes you think that, you know, you are reading about the garden where there is a rose and the nightingale, but it means something completely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, you know, it's obviously it's, it's it itself it is fascinating and fabulous that, uh, um, this uh, poem was written, of course, I mean, he, Rumi was a Sufi mystic and, and the fundamental one, but still it, it never ceased to amaze me that this kind of art was possible to be made uh, in, you know, uh, in Islam, er, well, still, er, early, but still Islam. So the uh, poem is called Bread Making. Oh, and uh, wine in this, uh, uh, in this poem symbolizes uh, ecstasy that leads you to the divine. The king is the divine. The scholar is the non-believer. Um, the beautiful woman in the garden is uh, a uh, road, so to speak, and to, uh, to reach the um, to reach the wisdom. Uh, and the rest you will find out from the poem. Bread making. There was a feast. The king was hurtly in his cups. So pouring wine and drinking himself. He saw a learned scholar walking by. Bring him and give him some of this fine wine, he ordered. Servants rushed out and brought the man to the king's table but he was not receptive. I had rather drink poison. I never tasted wine and never will take it away from me. He kept on with these loud refusals, disturbing the atmosphere of the feast. This is how it sometimes is at God's table. Someone who has heard about ecstatic love but never tasted it, disrupts the banquet. If there were a secret passage from his ear to his throat, everything in him would change. 
initiation would occur. And it is, he's all fire and no light, all husk and no kernel. A non-believer, an enlightened one. Hmm? The king gave orders, cupbearer, do what you must. This is how your invisible guide acts, the chess champion across from you that always wins. He cuffed the scholar and he said, taste, drink, and again. The cup was drained and the intellectual started singing and telling ridiculous jokes. He joined the garden, snapping his fingers and swaying. Soon, of course, he had to pee. He went out and there, near the latrine, he, was, he saw a beautiful woman, one of the king's harem. His mouth hung open. He wanted her. Right then he wanted her, and she was not unwilling. They fell to on the ground. You've seen a baker rolling dough. He kneads it gently at first, then more roughly. He pounds it on the board. It softly grounds under his palms. Now he spreads it out and rolls it flat. Then he bunches it and rolls it all the way out again, thin. Now he adds water and mixes it well. Now salt and a little more salt. Now he shapes it delicately to its final shape and slides it into the oven, which is already hot. Remember bread making. This is how your desire tangles with a desired one. And it is not just a metaphor for a man and a woman making love. Warriors in battle do this too. A great mutual embrace is always happening between the eternal and what dies, between essence and accident. The sport has different rules in every case, but it's basically, basically the same. And remember, the way you make love is the way God will be with you. Um, from uh, from uh, Baluchistan and uh, from um, yeah, Pakistan, you, we can we can hear, for example, this zikr. But uh, in a Jewish recording from Ukraine, from the twenties, um, they recorded some amazing brass band from Carpathian Mountains, and they play something which is which was called it's it's dance, Bulgarian zikr. So it's mean that they. They used names from ancient time when Bulgarians, you know, they were on the Black Sea and Zikris still from uh, its archives. Yes? So. influences you know from uh, from uh, around the world you know which is which create you know Eastern Europe next example is uh, gypsies from uh, Hungary who copy uh, they, they they copy by mouth you know uh, drums from Pakistan you know and India and they play on the cans you know like like this 
And also we can uh, we can hear this what what was you know the, the first uh, ashix in sound you know we can find this in uh, most in in um, cultures that they exist a little bit uh, uh, close from from war you know it's uh, in Kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan in the mountains we can find something which is which could be this this sound like original sound of ashix so this is example. This what I, I like uh, you know, the best, you know, is uh, of course Kurioza, you know, so I love uh, Bu Bucharest uh, culture of, uh, of uh, gypsies, they, their name is Lautari, uh, Lautareska was a clan of gypsies, uh, like, uh, they, the translation is uh, sti horse stealers, and uh, to, to go to Bukharest for gypsies, it was forbidden, I think, until the uh, middle of uh, 19th century. And when they came, they wanted to, to, to catch the sound of ta a town, you know, the, and, uh, and mix this with this, what was a kind of Ashok gypsy music. And, uh, and here it would be an amazing example of one singer uh, yeah, play. He played falsetto. Uh, he, sing, he sang falsetto, and uh, I met people who, who were on his concert, you know, and uh, and they said that all women, uh, faint, fainted, yes? fainted uh, during his concerts. You will see, he was like a typical, you know, strong guy, but. <laughs> So also, you know, behind you have typical like a zikr. Still, you know, we are at the same, you know, kind of uh, tradition. Yeah? But they exchange this to be much more, uh, you know, for a, for a, you know, proper Bucharestians, you know. But but they create by accident something very original. And uh, fortunately, Ceausescu he loves them, you know, and he uses them for a parties, you know. So. By also by accident they were recorded and uh, you have a lot of uh, recordings of uh, Lautareska. It's a music Lautareska music. And the story, you know, behind is typical. You know, poetry is a typical Ashok poetry. Also about love. Yes, so I as you can see. About, uh, yes. mm -hmm. poets. Were they using, like, for example, Kaole Bin Rumis and mm -hmm. other poets, uh, lyrics of the we are inventing? This is actually a very fundamental question because they use the poetics. Sometimes they, uh, sometimes they use uh, stanzas, sometimes, sometimes they use phrases, okay. or simply. Um, ideas, you know, I, um, that is basically something that, uh, uh, you know, mm, it, 
it transcends the, through the time. Yeah. The way that the way that you see that these concepts, uh, uh, these concepts travel, they do refer to the old times. And I will give you an example of that uh, from PVC uh, Ashu uh, uh, poetry. But uh, you know this 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 uh, translocal nature of of, of this tradition is. Uh, uh, you were you were watching the Ashik Karib movie yesterday. So uh, at some point uh, in the uh, in the uh, poemat in the in the epic poem, uh, there is this phrase uh, that says, "Morning prayer in the heart of Aleppo, midday prayer in the plains of Kars, evening prayer in beloved Tbilisi." My master gave me wings, I flew and I came. And uh, the, as you know the but story from, uh, from the original of Ashik Ka Karib. We don't know the author, it's... Uh, Look, what is that? Hmm? Uh, Pardon me? Uh, when it was written, like, do we have, do we know About 12th century. 12th century? Yes. Yeah. Sure. This one? Yes. This one, yeah. yes. Aleppo. Mm -hmm. Yes. But because... Uh, you see, uh, I know why, I'm, why I'm asking mm -hmm. because I read the Iranian poetry. I'm not that interested. So uh, it was created uh, by. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, the uh, Ashik Karib is later. Ashik Karib is later. No, the Ash no. I am. I was mm -hmm. asking about the poem you read. Yes, it's from 12th century. Which you just, about which you just read? Like no, the bread making. The olive oil and uh, like Ah, hold on a second. I will just check now. just to make sure. Um, I don't want to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Let us see. But uh, mm, uh, the internet is slow. But um, I will okay. I will answer with I will basically uh, give you the answer about the, how the how this uh, poetry just absorbed you know throughout the centuries like mm. for instance uh, uh, it, of course uh, all the Georgians know uh, Rustaveli how mm -hmm. er, what kind of era did he was and it was normal at that time in Nizami it was the same and uh, this is this is normal that that the, the, the epic poets of that time knew all the, um, uh, you know, knew all the epic poems from around the world. They were, they were very, very well educated. Uh, the ones that were connected through Persian culture to different other things. And uh, the concept that everyone knows what, uh, uh, every Georgian knows what uh, Mijnuri is, yes? Mm -hmm. So Mijnuri means a, uh, person uh, who is in love but uh, is uh, mad with love and the, the, the word uh, from Arabic means possessed by a jinn, mijnur. Possessed by a jinn? Possessed by a jinn. Ah, yeah. Yes. And, uh, uh, and in the poem of Rustaveli, which is which is echoing Leila and Majnun, because this is what it comes from, right? From Nizami. Um, he is transforming this concept again, you know? It's not, not just repeating, but transforming this concept and saying what... So, for instance, he must have knew about Nizami's work, Leila and Majnun, and uh, it's a very powerful concept, right? Mm. That Nizami is presenting in his work. But he transformed it uh, into uh, not only this mad lover, you know, a person possessed mm. by a gene of love, but also uh, created an ideal of friendship out of it, you know. So this, this like, it evolves. It evolves the whole entire time. And we should not forget that the, the, the poets, the Ashuks, uh, the, the bards, be, the, because they were very were well paid if they were good, so there is a huge competition between them. And always throughout the times, they are competing with each other, and the best ones are celebrities beyond imagination. Mm. I mean, they are presented, uh, uh, there, is a, there is an, you know, there's a, uh, there's a so, 
sources, uh, uh, historical sources saying that um, that Sayatnova uh, um, uh, uh, was presented a very expensive uh, silk roll, roll mm -hmm. uh, by the King of Kartli, by uh, by Erekle II, because he was the court uh, ashik for uh, Erekle II, and. Uh, you know, there are accounts of uh, sas encrusted with diamonds. I mean, this was a very, uh, this this was the top of the top, uh, mm, so to speak, like, you know, in, 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 in culture, in pop. Yes, you can imagine, like, you know. And uh, there are accounts of their contests that they were engaging in uh, for, you know, songs and riddles. Because they had to be very sharp, very... Uh, well educated, and uh, the the riddle contest and song contests were huge shows, you know, gathering the the, the whole community in whichever whichever place it was happening. Can you say that the the kind of saying on the king's court is the the was a gesture? In no, no, no. Pardon? No, no. They don't. They didn't. There was a gesture. There was a gesture. And no, they weren't a gesture. Like somebody who made jokes. Like shoot. No, no, by all means not. No, they they were, um, they were ashiks. It was you know the court the the, the court ashik. I mean, Sadnov at some point he's because he makes a point of pride out of it. He says that I am I am sazandari. Also, this is the Georgian word for it, We're deriving from saz, and in the modern Georgian it means uh, a musician. And uh, and it derives from the word saz, which is I'm um, sazandari of the king of Kartli, the soul that he Sato says. was in yeah? love with daughter of Eretle. He had uh, uh, a he sister. sister. Yes, the the story goes that he felt in love with uh, the king's yes, sister, and that was very unpolitical move. He was restrained, and uh, uh, and uh, he had to flee the court and. Uh, He's, he has few poems about it. Uh, there is an Armenian movie about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he was very sorry about his uh, uh, his uh, mistake, saying that you know I had such a hit, uh, such a fortune. I was like the first man in the in the in the country. I was the very king's Sazandari. I was the very king's you know Ashik, and look what I've done <coughs> with my faith. Yeah, and he, yes. Yeah, so um, also Ashik culture is, uh, it's exist, you know, uh, in, uh, I think in all Eastern Europe, because uh, in Poland we also had something like a tradition of these uh, singers. We still uh, can find this in um, Western Eastern Europe. We can find this in uh, Serbia, for example. This is what I play for you, Romania. Um, Last time I was uh, on the border of uh, Greece and uh, and Albania, where is uh, Epirus, amazing, uh, amazing uh, place, you know, full of uh, bloody histories. Uh, but uh, you know, there there close to this uh, place is an oracle of uh, Delphi oracle, and uh, and also also they they have an oracle of necro necromancer or something like that. And uh, it was about um, death, you know, and they create some kind of mixture of uh, of um, Sufi songs uh, from Bektashi sect because uh, Bektashi is still very important in Albania. Even uh, Hoja, uh, he didn't uh, change this too much, you know. After when Hoja died, you know, they come back very easy to to Bektashi. Um, movement. It's kind of uh, Sufi. Um, it's very similar to Hasidic movement, to, to be honest. So first, what I want to play is uh, Bektashi music from from Albania. This is North Albania. So you can see how close it is uh, to Armenia, you know, Azerbaijan, and uh, Persia. Yes. So it's something amazing. After I can play three more songs, you know, from Epirus, 
they uh, because there was a, you know they suffering a lot there and uh, they were influenced a lot uh, by some kind of mixture of uh, mytho Greek mythology and Bektashi uh, Sufi and uh, they create something which call morologia mo morolai this is a very special special lament you know so this is also a story you know about this that uh, all borderlanders they they created sometimes some lamentations and uh, they have uh, even now they have uh, competitions you know we can go to a Pyrus and they have uh, ex uh, competitions especially clarinet players you know they lost a little bit this poetry movement but uh, they still uh, they playing on the clarinets and you have a competition you know about who is the the best uh, lament player and their master is uh, uh, Kitsos Harasiadis I, ha I have a one uh, recording you know it's uh, also archives the title is a lament in a deep style you know so In Albania, you have um, many, many traditions, you know, of music, and uh, they are like uh, I think they keep something unique, you know, in uh, Eastern Europe, you know, that that, that it's something like uh, with Tbilisi, you know, but uh, but uh, Albania is a full country, you know, of uh, the proof of these meetings, you know, like uh, for example, North uh, uh, North Albania was. Uh, uh, the 40, I don't remember, no, 63 tribes lived there before the war, you know, before Second World War, and all of them were different, you know, so even t with languages and uh, music. And, uh, but at the end, you know, they create something which which called, be, uh, be, uh, how it's called this town, Beat, Beart, something like that, yeah, Beat, yes, Beat uh, tradition, you know, which is, some kind of mystical tradition and second is uh, with uh, Epirus with uh, lyrics lyrics are typical also uh, mystical um, like a Sufi you know kind of ancient Greek poetry Greek, in Greece, you know, the people generally from outside, you know, at least they hate this music. They said that it's like a village, stupid music, you know, very primitive. And <laughs> they are, they, they exist there, you know, they, they don't have a, uh, too much, uh, they are unknown, you know, generally in the television, you know, you can, sometimes you can find the Pius music, but not so much. And the last uh, thing is uh, polyphonic, you know, we spoke with, with Magda about an uh, amazing ethnomusicologist uh, from uh, Georgia, uh, Jordania, name? Tamas. Tama, Tamas, uh, no, Joseph. 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 So uh, he's a very important person for me now, and uh, uh, and he's, he talk about polyphonic, uh, he generally, he, he work uh, with the polyphonic uh, Georgian the music but generally about the idea of polyphony so what is amazing in, in this idea is this that that he said that polyphony polyphonia generally is a is a meeting you know so people are, are were cool used you know to uh, to to each other yes and they met and they sang together and uh, he also talked a little bit about albanian polyphony which is completely amazing it's called isopolyphony and it's one of the oldest uh, tradition without uh, without influences from uh, uh, for example from byzantic uh, choirs and he also said that polyphonic is our uh, first tradition not monophonic which is, which is, yeah. which is contrary yeah. 
Yes, which is contrary to what the uh, 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 19th century and then later 20th century uh, European Musicology School uh, is trying to convince everyone with. Uh, so, uh, as Joseph Jordania is uh, saying, first was polyphonic singing because we um, we humans uh, have expressed ourselves in this way. He connects it to the speech, he connects it to the uh, communal behavior that is first be before the, 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 the individual behavior. There's always, uh, there was, there's always communal behavior. So, um, so it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating what he's writing uh, generally about music. Um, but uh, in the context of what we are talking about and about the meeting, um, I hope we gave you a taste of uh, how all this travels. I mean, what are the incredible roots of the notions and sounds and, uh, uh, and philosophical and poetic meanings? We'll continue to talk about it tomorrow. Uh, but you wanted to play the last tune, yes? We still have a half an hour. Oh, do we? I thought no, I, no, I mean, it, it, it can be because um, we will take a short break and then there is a, a film. So if you right, have, uh, because we have a lot to talk about, but we have I tomorrow know. as well. <laughs> so we have time also for the last uh, uh, song. song, of course. Okay, so this polyphonic <laughs> is the best, you know, because it's about meeting. You know, also. There is theory, you know, what is music, you know, especially in this epi Epirus, you know, they believe that music was an uh, Illyrian alphabet, you know, because there was so many tribes uh, that they couldn't exist with some one language, you know, and today they find music to, to, to yeah, to, to, to expression yeah. or to talk, you know, and uh, this example, you know, this polyphony, it could be, you know, something like a, our first uh, language, you know, they use words here, but it's possible, you know, because there is a, you will uh, hear this uh, higher voice. Uh, he is singing always in Albanian tradition, is this high voice who, who make uh, harmonics, you know, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, singing. And the texts are still, you know, the, the, the same like uh, in uh, Sufi, tra in uh, Ashik traditions. So they are about heroes, you know, about uh, some warriors, about love.
Yeah, I've successfully put Rumi to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he feels at home. With Hope you music. enjoyed <laughs> it. Now, uh, yes, uh, let's have a break and then we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of that song? Uh, name of this song? Oh, Dango de Bebe. Bay Dati Dalagat.